Hello, I'm Leslie Wunstall, the Education and Awareness Coordinator at Dysautonomia Support Network. We're pleased to bring you Master Medicare with Margo as part of Discovery Education. With 14 years of health insurance industry experience complemented with a law degree, Margo Steinleg has become a nationally recognized Medicare expert. In addition to serving thousands of direct clients, Margo is a trusted resource for hundreds of financial advisors, CPAs, and estate planners on integrating Medicare planning into retirement and estate planning. She's a returning speaker for many associations with the mission of providing members with understanding the strategy of Medicare to best serve their current and future needs. With such a wide range of ages in our dysautonomia community, this talk on Medicare will be beneficial. For those in our community on Social Security Disability, Medicare is available after a 24-month qualifying period. For our older community members who are approaching the age of 65, this information will be incredibly valuable. Or maybe you have parents and grandparents who would benefit from this information. You too can master Medicare with the help of Margot. So thank you, Margot, for joining us today. Hi, everybody. My name is Margot Steinlage, president of Steinlage Insurance Agency. Um, today, we are going to take a deep dive approach to Medicare. We're going to look at many different angles. Um, the first part of the webinar will cover the rules around signing up for Medicare at 65. The second part of this webinar will cover the um, lingo, the terminology of Medicare A, B, supplement, drug, Part C. And then the last part of this webinar will cover regulation changes. Um, specifically Biden's Inflation Reduction Act that will have pretty monumental changes um, this year in 2023 and also in 2024 and 2025. This webinar is up to date based on 2023 figures. If you have questions um, after watching this recorded webinar, please do not hesitate to reach out to us at Steinlage Insurance Agency. We have a whole team that is happy to answer any of your questions if and when they arise. You will also get a follow-up um, email asking for any additional information if you need it. So a little bit about Steinlage Insurance Agency. We really offer this white glove approach to signing up for Medicare. Um, we give you advice on whether or not Medicare is required at 65. We compare group coverage to Medicare. If you have younger, um, a younger spouse or children on your group plan, we take this into the equation when we make recommendations. We also cover ACA product in select states, in addition to Medicare in almost all states. We're in about 45 of the 50 states. Also, if you are a high-earning individual, we help you with your Medicare IRMA appeal each and every year. And then we are very proactive with our Part D and Medicare Advantage review each year, which runs October 15th through December 7th. And we are proactive in that we send out requested information uh, in September to get prepped for this October through December seven-week enrollment session. What we are, Steinlage Insurance Agency, is an independent Medicare brokerage. We get appointed with all national carriers that offer Medicare-styled product. So that when you sit down with us and you are ready to make the move into Medicare, we are showcasing all products available and helping you narrow down a decision based on your specific needs, your appetite for risk, and what's available in your select state and zip code. Again, we're in about 45 of the 50 states. It's very easy for us to pick up new states. So if you make a move, our team needs to be updated with that move so we can set your product specifically um, based on the state that you are moving to. So let's jump right in with what is Medicare um, and who is eligible. So the general rule and what I like to tell clients is that when you turn 65, you need to pick up Medicare Part A and Part B to avoid any penalties or gaps in your health insurance coverage. So that's the general rule. If you delay Medicare at 65, for most people, you will see a late enrollment Part B penalty and a gap in your current coverage. 
The exception to that rule is if you or a spouse are working with a large employer and you plan to continue working with that large employer and that large employer is offering you group coverage, then you can delay Medicare. But for most individuals, you need to pick up Medicare Part A and Part B at 65 to avoid any penalties. Also, if you are under 65 and you are hitting your 24th month of Medicare disability eligibility, then you are automatically enrolled in Medicare, even though you're not 65. Same goes for end-stage renal disease. If you have end-stage renal disease, then you will get Medicare Part A and Part B um, as soon as you are diagnosed with that end-stage renal disease. So let's jump into that exception. So if you have access to employer coverage and you plan to continue working after turning 65, then the next step in the equation is to determine whether or not your employer coverage is large or small. So the size of your employer is the determining factor. Is your employer 20 or more employees or fewer than 20? If your employer has more than 20 20 or more employees, regardless of whether they are full or part-time, as long as there's 20, then Medicare can be optional. That means you can stay on your large employer plan, your employer plan or your spouse's large employer plan and delay Medicare Part A and Part B without penalties. That's called Medicare secondary payer rules. And Medicare is not required if you have access to large employer coverage. Also note with that large employer coverage, if there's a part um, or an HSA component that's built into your large employer plan and you or your spouse are contributing into that HSA health savings account, then we need to be conscious of the part A free benefit and delay both A and B so you can continue contributing into your HSA. IRS does not allow you to contribute into an HSA if you've enrolled in Medicare under most circumstances. Also, if you are delaying Medicare and now you're turning 68, 69, and you want to retire, when you start your Medicare A and B paperwork, you you will have a six-month retroactive look back on your Part A free benefit. When that Part A free benefit takes effect is the last month you can contribute into an HSA. So we need to time your HSA contributions with your desired retirement date because there can be negative consequences if that's not timed accurately or appropriately. So large employer coverage, 20 or more employees, then Medicare becomes optional at 65. You don't have to sign up at at 65. You can delay. If it's under 20 employees, your employer, that's offering group, then Medicare is generally required and you need to sign up for Medicare Part A and Part B to avoid any penalties or gaps in your coverage. Then the next set of questions is, Does it make sense to stay on that secondary group policy, small group plan, or move to a supplement drug plan or Medicare Advantage plan? Again, this is all built into our consultation with each and every client. We also look at a lot of uh, moving parts that that come come into play here. Do you have a younger spouse? Do you have children dependents on your plan? Um, What is your retirement timeline? Are you high wealth? Do you have an IRMA surcharge that will will trigger a much higher Medicare premium? What's your benefits on this large employer plan? Are you contributing into an HSA? These are all questions that we try to get from you before we even sit down for a consultation. So we have a very good isolated picture of what it is that you have available and how does that play into the Medicare equation. Also, another little tip on HSAs, once you do turn 65 and move into Medicare, or if you are now moving into Medicare because you're retired, um, you can use your Medicare, or excuse me, you can use your HSA funds that you've accumulated over the years on almost all medical expenses and premiums 
The only major red flag here is Medicare supplement premiums are not a qualified medical expense. So you cannot use HSA funds to pay for your Medicare supplement, also known as Medigap premium. A lot of clients will use their accumulated HSA funds for dental cost. Okay, so what is Medicare? I keep talking about Medicare A, Medicare B. So when you are ready to move into Medicare, whether it's at turning, whether it's turning 65 or you are now retiring well after 65 and you're coming off of this large group plan, you are picking up part A and part B. Part A is free for most individuals as long as you worked 40 quarters or more, which is about 10 years of work history. And if you don't have the work history under your, your, um, your belt, you can tap into your spouse's work history. And as long as the two of you have a combined 40 quarters, then Medicare Part A hospital benefit is free. Everyone will pay a Part B medical premium. And for 2023, the premium is $164.90. That's per month per person. Medicare Part B and Part D are income-based. And we'll jump into that later in the, the webinar. But they are based on your modified adjusted gross income. And that's per household. So everybody will pay the standard Part B premium. Some will pay less if you're qualifying for Medicaid. Others will pay more if you're um, in that higher income benchmark. And that's called IRMA, Income Related Monthly Adjusted Amount. So when you get your red, white, and blue card, you'll have Part A hospital and Part B medical, two moving parts. With just original Medicare and that red, white, and blue card, if you walk into the hospital, you'll have a Part A deductible, hospital deductible of $1,600. And that's per 60-day occurrence. So if you walk in June, June 5th with a knee issue or a heart attack and you're in the hospital for five days or there's an infection, you're triggering the 1,600 Part A deductible. Then let's say in November or December, you go back in the hospital, you're triggering another Part A deductible because you're outside of that 60-day occurrence. Part B medical has a much smaller exposure. It's $226 per year. Once you satisfy the deductible, then Medicare will cover roughly 80% of your charges. So the gap in Medicare is your Part A 60-day occurrence deductible, the small Part B medical annual deductible, and the 20% coinsurance that Medicare does not cover. Medicare covers 80, you're responsible for 20. There's no cap on that 20% exposure. You'll also see here that there's no drug coverage, there's no dental, there's no vision, there's no hearing built into original Medicare. That's where all of these ancillary products come into play. They are coming in to fill the gaps of Medicare. To fill the gaps of Medicare, there's really two routes that you can take. You can go option one, original Medicare with a supplement and a standalone Part D drug plan. Or you can go with option two and sign up for a Part C Medicare Advantage plan. It's important to note that no matter which route you take, option one or option two here, you will be required to pay that Part B standard $164.90 premium per month per person, plus any income surcharge. So let's jump into the differences and the pros and cons between the two different paths that you can take. I have cold coffee. <laughs> um, okay, so option one, when you sign up for Medicare Part A and Part B, if you choose a Medicare supplement, also known as Medigap plan, you will also pick up a standalone Part D drug plan to cover your prescriptions. 
This combination, original Medicare plus your supplement plus a drug plan, gives you nationwide access to any doctor that takes Medicare. You show your Medicare card, you can go to any doctor that takes Medicare. The provider bills Medicare, Medicare turns around and submits your claim to the supplement plan on file. It doesn't matter if you have um, any carrier on the supplement, they are all mandated to pay once Medicare is triggered. So you would never go into a provider's office and say, I have XYZ company for my supplement. I have uh, ABC company for my supplement. Do you take my supplement? That is not the question to ask. You will only ask, do you take Medicare? Medicare is my primary payer. Whoever my secondary payer is on file with that supplement is mandated to pay once Medicare is, is triggered. So the question to always ask here is, do you take Medicare? Is this Medicare approved? When you're shopping your supplemental plans, there's plans F, plans G, plans N. All Fs are identical. All Gs are identical. G is in girl. All N is in Nancy's are identical. The difference will boil down to the rating, how that company rates their policies, and the premium. There's community rated, attained age rated, and um, issue age rated. Depending on your state, depending on the plan, it, it varies. The supplement F will cover 100% of your gaps in Medicare. So that Part A hospital de deductible every 60 days, the Part B medical, um, sm much smaller deductible each year, and that 20% gap that Medicare leaves on the table. You show supplement F and Medicare card, you have 100% nationwide coverage for hospital and medical with any provider that takes Medicare. As of January 1st of 2020, Medicare has closed access to that plan F. If you turn 65 and signed up for Medicare prior to January 1st of 2020, you are grandfathered into this plan F. Most clients these days are opting for plan G girl you show your Medicare card, you show your supplement G card, G is in girl, regardless of who that carrier is, and you have 100% nationwide coverage with any doctor that takes Medicare for medical and hospital, except for your annual Part B medical deductible, which is $226 for 2023. So you show your Medicare card, you show your supplement G card, you have 100% coverage outside of the 226 per year medical deductible. Plan N is pretty darn close to that. It has the 226 deductible, $20 copays at the um, provider's office, $50 ER copay, and the biggest gap is that 15% Part B excess charge. So if you go to a Medicare doctor who does not agree to Medicare reimbursements, reimbursement rates. That doctor is called a non-assigned Medicare provider. That non-assigned Medicare provider can balance bill you 15% above what Medicare reimburses. So if it's a $1,000 Medicare reimbursement rate and the doctor is non-assigned, that doctor can balance bill you 15% above the $1,000. So an extra $150 you are responsible for this $150 balance bill with a plan N supplement. Plan F and G cover that part B excess balance billing. All of the F, Gs, and Ns cover foreign care. Generally, it's a $250 foreign care deductible and then 80% coverage up to a lifetime maximum of $50,000. In addition to getting Medicare and supplement, regardless if you go FG or N, you'll also need a Part D drug plan. This is where we shop the 30 to 35 different carriers in your zip code to see which of these Part D drug plans are offering you the best coverage based on premiums, deductibles, and co-pays on your current prescriptions. This is where you have a lot of volatility 
and this is where our annual review each October comes into play. Once you become a client of ours, you'll get an annual review form in September. We will ask you to complete that annually so that we have up-to-date prescriptions based on your, your, your prescription list and then shop that with the upcoming year's product. So in September of 2023, you will get this review form and we will shop the 2024 product. If you wanted to add dental and vision here, generally you would add a private dental and vision policy and those combined are about $40 to $60 a month per person. So this is option one, Medicare plus supplement and drug. Option two is for you to go with a Part C Medicare Advantage plan. Again, you will pay Medicare, the standard premium, plus any IRMA if you have it tacked onto your policy. And then when you sign up for a Medicare Advantage plan, most of these nationwide have a zero premium attached to them. When you sign up for Medicare Advantage, this zero premium plan, you are now funneled into your Medicare Advantage network. You no longer have original Medicare as your primary payer. Your Medicare Advantage plan is running the show. They are dictating your network and your out-of-pocket exposure. You show your Part C Medicare Advantage HMO or PPO plan to your provider and you say, do you take my HMO? Do you take my PPO? You still pay your Medicare Part B premium, the one sixty four ninety. You pay that directly to Medicare, but on the back in the background, Medicare is subsidizing your Advantage plan when you enroll. That's how you can get a zero premium for your Advantage product. I have a lot of clients who are intrigued and say, "How can I get a zero premium plan? That doesn't make sense." It's because you pay Medicare. Medicare turns around and uh, subsidizes or pays your Medicare Advantage plan to manage your care. These Medicare Advantage plans are very attractive because they are low premium. They have a lot of extra perks like vision, dental, hearing, gym, um, over-the-counter benefits, flex spending cards for utilities, um, pet food, uh, groceries. They're very attractive, but it's important to note that if and when you use care, you have out-of-pocket exposure. So if you go see a doctor, you have a copay. If you're in the hospital, you have a $200 to $300 copay per day. If you need an MRI, you pay a copay, $250 or 20% coinsurance. All of your out-of-pocket exposure that you pay for services rendered throughout the year are being added up. Once your out-of-pocket exposure for services rendered throughout the year meets your plan's maximum out of pocket, then your Medicare Advantage HMO or PPO plan pays 100%. So if you have a $3,000 max out of pocket, once you pay co-pays up to $3,000, now your Advantage plan pays 100%. Also super important to note that drug co-pays does not go to your med medical max out of pocket. So if you're on expensive medications, that does not chip away at your medical max out of pocket. So again, these are very attractive, but the headache is the out-of-pocket exposure that can come and some of the restrictions of the network and prior authorizations if and when you need rehab or surgery. The trade-off is that you're saving a lot in monthly premiums on the front end. So generally, when I'm talking to clients and helping them make a decision, you know, we have 50% of our clients go supplement, the other half go advantage. So there is no one like size fits all here for clients. Um, if you have a higher appetite for risk, if you are looking to keep your cost as low as possible, and you are okay with a Medicare Advantage style plan, then this is a great option for those higher um, appetite of risk clients healthier individuals and individuals looking to get the extra perks with sup, um, which are not included in your supplemental product. However, the biggest hurdle or headache here that can come much later down the road 
is if you ever want to drop your Advantage plan and now move to a Medicare supplement plan, in almost all states, you are required to answer medical underwriting to move Advantage to supplement. So when you're making your initial decision of do I want to go supplemental or do I want to go Medicare Advantage, you need to ask yourself, am I okay with being in a Medicare Advantage plan for the rest of my life? Because if and when you ever get unhealthy and you want to try to move to a supplement plan, that's where these supplement plans can deny you because they will require a medical underwriting review where they will ask you health questions. They'll look at your prior five-year history. They'll look and see if there's any pending issues and they'll say you're denied or you're accepted. So you can get stuck in these Advantage plans. When you're turning 65 or coming off large group and you're picking up Medicare for the first time, you have the option to enroll in a supplement without any question, health questions. There is no underwriting or health questionnaire if you're in your initial turning 65 or new to Medicare because you're coming off group coverage enrollment period. So you can get into your supplement, you can lock it in, and then always, it's very easy to move from supplement to draw, um, advantage down the road, but again, advantage to supplement is much more difficult because of that underwriting, underwriting component. Also, if you go supplement and drug off the get-go, we can shop your drug plan to drug plan without any health questions. So every October, we'll shop your drug plan and move you into a um, the most appropriate drug plan, which most clients don't need to make a change. I would say about 25% each year need to make a change. But when we move drug plan to drug plan, there's no underwriting. You're guaranteed enrollment in the new plan. So when do you make changes? Once you're on Medicare, we've selected the product type, whether you went supplement and drug or you go Medicare Advantage, you can review your drug plan every October through December for a January 1st effective date. We can go Part D to Part D, drug plan to drug plan, or we can shop Medicare Advantage to Medicare Advantage during that annual enrollment period. If you're healthy, then you can move supplements, you can move Advantage to supplement because you can pass underwriting. Then there's another enrollment period called the open enrollment period, which is when you can make a one-time change Medicare Advantage to Medicare Advantage. If you are in the wrong plan, you can. It, it's a safety net to move from Advantage to Advantage. It's a one-time change, or you can drop your Advantage and move to original Medicare with a Part D drug plan, but you need to make sure you're approved with that underwriting into your supplement the supplement will not take you unless you're in good health. You can rate shop your supplements anytime throughout the year, but they are always subjected to health questions. So let me go back a stage, uh, a page. If you are going supplement to supplement, plan G to plan N, plan G to plan G, carrier to carrier, you are required to answer medical underwriting questions to rate shop and go from carrier X to carrier Y, G to G, G to N. Anytime you're changing your supplement, the general rule is that you're required to answer health questions regardless of when you're making that change throughout the year. There is no enrollment period for the supplementals once you're on a supplement. You can make a change anytime throughout the year. Okay, so the last part of the presentation here is about in um, IRMA and regulation changes. So anyone who's a high earner, I'm going to skip to this page here. Anyone who's a high earner making 97000 in modified AGI as a single tax filer or 194000 as a joint tax filer will see an IRMA income surcharge on their standard Medicare Part B premium at the 164.90. So what Medicare is using is a two-year look back. So for 2023, Medicare is using your 2021 modified adjusted gross income. 
for 2023, Medicare is using your 2021 modified adjusted gross income. Then in 2024, Medicare will automatically update their income information based on your 2022 modified adjusted gross income. <laughs> They're looking at your household tax filing status. We can appeal. So let's say you had a really high 2021 modified AGI because you were still working. Then in 2022 or 2023, you are retiring and stopping that work. So you have a lower anticipated 2023 modified AGI. We can appeal and tell Medicare, hey, don't use my 2021 modified AGI use my 2023 anticipated modified AGI because of my life event. I've had retirement or work stoppage or a death or a divorce. That leaves me with a lower annual modified AGI for the current year. This is where you would fill out SSA 44. We assist in this process. The biggest change happening for 2023 and beyond is with Biden's Inflation Reduction Act. So in 2022, August, Biden passed the Inflation Reduction Act, which is essentially closing the donut hole and completely modifying how Medicare Part D covers medications. So for 2023, we will see no Part D vaccine cost. So if you need to get your Shingrix shots in 2023, you will have no out-of-pocket exposure under a Part D vaccine. This is wildly different than 2022. If you had a Part D drug plan in 2022 and went and got Shingrix, you paid a, a, an arm and a leg for that Shingrix shot. For 2023, there is no cost sharing. Your drug plan will cover 100% of all Part D drug vaccines like Shingrix. In 2024, Medicare is eliminating the catastrophic coverage stage of Part D. And in 2025, they are adding a $2,000 out-of-pocket cap for Part D drugs. So I like to go to my handy donut um, illustration here. So all Part D drug plans, regardless if you go Medicare supplement and a standalone Part D, or you have Medicare Advantage with built-in drug coverage, you have the same structure within Medicare and Part D. So there's different stages to your drug coverage under any Medicare product, whether it's Part D standalone or built-in drug coverage to your Part C Medicare Advantage plan. <clears throat> So all drug coverage will have a deductible. Your plan chooses whether or not they want a deductible and have a deductible. Some have a zero. The max deductible for 2023 is $505. Once you pay your plan's deductible, now you're in the initial coverage stage or phase where you pay a simple copay or coinsurance for your medication. So Eliquis is one of the more popular expensive medications. It's about $600. Uh, let's just say it's $1,000 per 30-day supply for simple math here. You go fill Eliquis in January, excuse me. You go fill Eliquis in January and you're going to pay a roughly $40 copay for Eliquis every 30 days. If you're filling a 90-day, it's $120. Once you are, excuse me, every time you fill, Medicare is calculating the retail cost of that medication being filled. So if you're only paying $40 and Eliquis is $1,000, Medicare is calculating the $1,000 retail cost every time you fill it. So by the time you are reaching 4,600, that's about April, May timeframe, you filled Eliquis four to five months at $1,000 a month, you're hitting this initial coverage phase at 4,660 for 2023. And what that does is it takes you out of this simple copay structure where you're paying zero, five, 10, $40 on your medications and now it dumps you into the Medicare coverage gap 
also known as the donut hole, where your drug plan, regardless of how you're getting it, Medicare D or Part C, your drug component backs away and puts 25% coinsurance as your responsibility on all medications being filled. So if you go fill Eliquis and you've hit this 4660 in, in initial um, retail cost, and now you go from a $40 simple copay to a 25% coinsurance on Eliquis, you're paying 25% on a $1,000 medication. That's $250 per month in copay. So there's a huge shift and a huge you know, responsibility that's put on Medicare beneficiaries. Once you trigger this donut hole, you are paying out of your pocket 25% coinsurance. To get out of this 25% coinsurance donut hole, Medicare is calculating how much you paid in the deductible phase, the initial coverage phase with those simple co-pays, and the 25% coinsurance plus a manufacturer's discount that's being tossed in. Once all of those uh, factors reach a 7,400, now you're taken out of this donut hole 25% coinsurance and you're put into the catastrophic coverage phase where you will pay 5% of that Eliquis or $1,000 medication. Your drug plan picks up the residual. What's happening in 2024 is Medicare is closing or eliminating the catastrophic coverage phase. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Once you <clears throat> hit the 7,400 and out of pocket exposure, it's called true out of pocket exposure, troop. Once you satisfy that 7,400, now your drug plan pays 100% for all of 2024. In 2025, Congress is coming in and completely restructuring this and they're putting a $2,000 cap on your out-of-pocket exposure. So there is essentially no more donut hole in this initial coverage phase. It's all going to shift. And once you come out of pocket $2,000, your drug plan will come in and pay 100%. This is brand new leg, uh, leg legislation. We will see if it sticks um, and be right here with you guys is the regulation kind of changes the drug plan structure, but we really will see the teeth of this regulation take hold in 2025 with that $2,000 cap. But for 2023, this year, what we will see is the elimination of any Part D vaccine coinsurance. So you are paying zero for your Part D vaccines. You still have the donut hole exposure for all of 2023 and 2024. Let me go back. So here's the timeline. I'm going to leave it up and stay quiet for a second so you guys can digest it. If you would like a copy of this PDF, please just shoot us an email. We will give you a copy so that you can have it handy um, for as a resource. Okay, so what to take away? There are a ton of moving parts in Medicare. Your situation is wildly different from your neighbors. The more you talk to people about Medicare, the more you see how many nuances there are, how many rules there are. Um, some people love Advantage. Some people swear off of Advantage and only go supplement. Um, there really is no right answer that I can just uh, tell everybody. Um, a consultation with our team is, is highly recommended. I always recommend starting this process sooner rather than later. Um, if you are turning 65 and you have any questions around Medicare, um, or just want to make sure that, yes, you can delay Medicare and you're making the right decision. Sometimes it, all it takes is 15 minutes to just say, hey, you're you're in a good spot, delay. Or it we uncover that, hey, you do need to make a change and move to Medicare. Um, we, we help you through this entire process. So don't hesitate to reach out to us. Again, we have a whole team here. Um, we have offices in multiple states. We all work together. 
please, please reach out anytime. Here is our contact information. Go on our website. We have a ton of great information on our website at steinlogiagency.com. And you can reach me at margo at steinlogiinsurance.com as well. Have a great day and thank you for watching.